Okay, I'm in the car and I have this device here, which is usually intended for another experiment, but I'm going to use this device as a clever way of calculating the acceleration of the car. I have this thing that is free to swing, and when it comes up to a certain height over here, you can see that it makes a stop at a certain angle, and I'm going to accelerate the car, and I'm going to see what angle it goes up to. I'm going to measure the angle and then from there I'm going to calculate the acceleration of the car. I can use this as a way of calculating the car's acceleration uh, and the car's deceleration. I could also make a turn and calculate how fast I'm turning and the acceleration of the car as I'm turning. So let's uh, stop for a sec. Okay, I have the car on drive now. I'm going to push the gas pedal and accelerate. Okay, you can see now um, the pendulum swung back and stopped at this point. I'm going to use my iPhone application here, find out what angle this is. Okay, about 47 degrees. The inclination angle. So from there, I can calculate the acceleration that the car had. Okay, now I have it set in the opposite direction so that I can brake and the pendulum will swing forward and I can calculate what is my deceleration, the deceleration of the car. If I brake too hard, it might even go more than that scale, so I don't, I'm not going to necessarily brake my hardest. So I'll put it on drive. Now, I'm going to measure the angle to which this rose, and the angle is about 43, 40, 44, so bouncing around that area. So let's just say 43, and then we'll calculate the deceleration from that. Okay, now I have it slanted sideways so that it's going to swing outward when I make a left turn quickly. Okay, now the equations of the pendulum uh, in the car looks like this. You have the ball uh, or something here hanging, and then here's a free swinging pendulum. You have mg down, tension t, and the inclinometer on the iPhone is measuring the angle with respect to the horizontal. The more I accelerate or decelerate, the further this will swing up, and the, sm the smaller this angle will be, it will mean I have accelerated faster. So it's T sine theta, which is the vertical component of T, is equal to mg, the weight of the uh, object, and then T cosine theta is the horizontal component, is equal to ma. Therefore, uh, tangent theta, if you divide these two equations, you get rid of the tension T in the pendulum. You get rid of the M. So all it really depends on is G over A. And therefore, A is equal to G over tangent theta. The greater the angle of the swinging object with respect to the, uh, the, uh, the horizontal, the greater the angle, the greater the tangent will be, and therefore the less the acceleration. The less the angle... That means it will have swung out further out. That angle will be a smaller number, and therefore the less the tangent, and therefore the greater the acceleration. Therefore, I calculated the acceleration here of the car, 9.8 over tangent 47, 9.14 meters per second squared. It's important to note that this is a very 
momentary acceleration. It's not a, the car could not sustain this acceleration for a long period of time. So it's very quick, right when the car got started, 9.14 meters per second squared. The deceleration of the car was 9.8 over tangent 43, which is, and I'm just gonna add a negative here because it's a deceleration. It was 10.51 meters per second squared. That one I could have even increased more if I had gone faster and braked very hard. So um, you could see this is a technique of uh, just pretty much as long as you have something hanging from the car that's a free pendulum, as long as you determine the angle uh, of the to which it rises, you can calculate the acceleration or deceleration of the car. Now in the case of the when I made a turn, you could see from the video that uh, it did not go out to uh, as much as it did when I braked or when I accelerated. So I'm going to estimate that the angle was 60, let's say. It did not go out as far. The angle was greater. So let me just estimate 60. And then you have similar equations here. You have T sine of 60 is equal to mg divided by, and then the horizontal component, t cosine 60 is mv squared over r. So this time the acceleration, instead of being a forward or backward acceleration, it's a centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. When you divide these two equations, the tension cancels, the mass cancels, you get tangent 60 is g divided by v squared over r, and then you could take this and make tangent 60 is g r over v squared. I'm going to estimate that I was driving about 10 to 12 miles per hour, which is about 5 meters per second. So if I put that here, I could use that as an experimental way of calculating the radius of curvature of the circle that I was making. Or I could have done another uh, opposite way. I could estimate the radius and then thereby calculate what velocity I was uh, uh, going at. So now let me put uh, that in, see what I get. Okay, so now what I did is I took the velocity, which is approximately 5 meters per second. I put it here into the equation of the velocity. I have 5 squared, 9.8 r. Now I'm solving for r, tangent 60 times 25 divided by 9.8. So that's the radius of curvature of the circle that the car was going in. 25 tangent 60 over 9.8. I get about 4.42 meters which is approximately 14 feet, which is about right. The circle that I was making was about uh, 15, 14, 15, 10 to 15 feet, roughly in that area. So you could see that uh, by just approximating that angle at about 60, going through all the similar equations, I calculated uh, the centripetal acceleration, and therefore I have the velocity uh, tangent 60 and then from there I got the radius and the number made sense from here I could also calculate what was my centripetal acceleration of the car so when I put the equation a centripetal is v squared over r 5 squared over 4.42 I get 5.66 meters per second squared which is less than the acceleration and deceleration of the cars okay so you could see how this method could be used in different kinds of situations Thank you.